Namaskar. My name is Suddhashil Ghosh and I am a researcher at Aurangabad. We are going to talk about statistical decision theory and this is the first lecture in the series. We will be talking about certain basic elements. So let us first of all understand what is a distribution. A distribution is a mathematical function. So what does the mathematical function do? The mathematical function gives us the probability of a particular value of x. So if x equal to v, it will give you the probability of x having the value, having the value v. So this is what it does. All right. Now this is the. If you see on this slide, this f x represents the Gaussian distribution. In the Gaussian distribution, there are two parameters. The parameters are mu and sigma. Mu is an indicative of the mean and sigma is an indicative of the standard deviation. So mu and sigma are the parameters and if we say mu equal to 0 and sigma equal to 1, what we will get is the standard normal distribution. So there are various examples of the normal distribution here. The various examples of the Gaussian distribution here is the standard normal distribution is mu equal to 0 and sigma equal to 1. And now we then look at the cumulative distribution. The cumulative distribution is nothing but the integration of this function fx up to the value of a particular variable. So basically, so if I have uh, phi of x, but this is capital phi of x and we are going to integrate this function up to the value x. So this is uh, what we are getting. So this is called the cumulative distribution function and the cumulative distribution function is nothing but the area under the curve up to a particular value. Okay. Now when we are talking about the area of a particular curve, so there comes the concept of two different notations. One notation is small p, the other notation is capital P. So this capital P denotes the cumulative probability, the small p denotes probability. So cumulative probability as I would like to remind you, the cumulative probability is the area under the curve that you can see in this particular figure. Now the motivation behind this particular lecture is to compare various products. So in this slide we are seeing uh, products which have been developed for children and these are basically food products and uh, in the market we have many of these food products and you might have seen that during the, uh, I mean when, while you are watching the TV, you will be watching various advertisements. And you will say that look, uh, this is uh, bone beta available, the compline is available, the Hollis is available, the power beta is available, and you might be wondering which one should I uh, give to the children. And this is a common question asked by the parents which one should I give to the children? If I come to the current scenario, that is COVID 19 scenario, various vaccines are being developed. One is being developed by India, the other one is developed by Russia, then the third one is being developed by the United Kingdom and of course th there is another uh, medicine which is a proposed medicine uh, and this particular medicine as I say we have done certain trials but uh, there are of course people who are skeptical about it. So the question again here is either to compare various products which are child uh, products or they come to compare which one is the better medicine. So this, this is basically the motivation behind this lecture. So if I want to compare various products, we will have to follow a scientific method and the traditional scientific method is what we call as the hypothesis based deduction. So I am introducing the topic called hypothesis, the term called hypothesis here and the central concept of this particular method is to is to develop a falsifiable hypothesis. What is falsifiable hypothesis? I must be able to prove that statement. This is a statement 
which is right or wrong. So I have to do the testing of this hypothesis and this testing can be done either by an experiment or by doing computation. So if I am testing algorithms, I will be doing it by computation. If I am testing medicines or child products, I will be doing it through experiments. So the test will either support or refute the hypothesis. So it will either say yes, this is okay, the, whatever I am thinking, it is correct or it will be wrong. So if it is wrong, then there will be a new uh, set of hypothesis formulation and testing. So this is the traditional scientific method. This is how science develops. So let us come to the definition of the hypothesis. So a statistical hypothesis, and let me, I mean, let me be very clear, we are talking about a statistical hypothesis here. We are going to use statistics for hypothesis testing. It's a statistical hypothesis, it's an assumption about a population parameter. So when I say population parameter, I remember that we have discussed the normal distribution earlier and the normal distribution had for a population parameters as the mean and the sigma. So this assumption about the population parameter may or may not be true. Okay, so uh, population parameter regarding mu and sigma that I said, it is just an example. I'm saying you might be considering other population parameters also. So hypothesis testing is basically the uh, a set of formal procedures that we use, that the statistician use to accept or reject a statistical hypothesis. All right. So. When we are talking about statistical hypothesis, there are two basic terms that we are, which we are going to introduce and one is called the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis means there is no difference. So as we can see on the slide, um, either the data that we have procured through experiments, it is following a particular law, theory or distribution. But the data that we have procured through a toss of a coin or die that is not biased. And the data that we have procured through experience, experiments or survey, which indicate that all products are the same. So for example, if I'm going to compare various health products that are, that are there in the market, various milk drinks, health drinks that are there in the market, the null hypothesis says all products are the same, there is no difference. Whereas, alternative hypothesis says, that the data does not follow the law or the theory. There is the difference in the outcomes. So if I'm comparing multiple products, at least one product is different. When I'm, when I'm talking about a coin, so I'm going to flip the coin multiple times. So let us suppose, for example, I'm going to flip the coin 200 times. So it is an expectation that 100 times there will be heads and 100 times there will be tails. But when I do the experiment, it might not be the trick, might not be the case. So one starts wondering whether the coin or die is biased or not. So one starts wondering. So the alternate hypothesis says that the coin is biased. The null hypothesis says that the coin is not biased. All right. So broadly, we can say that there are three kinds of tests. It's broadly saying. So when we are talking about the first kind that is whether the data follows a particular law or distribution so there is a certain kind of test that we follow here when two or more data sets belong to the same population so we have we have collected data uh, for two different experiments for two different experiments independently but they are actually the same thing so or when we are talking about comparing two different algorithms or two different products like two different medicines or two or more different medicines so this is a third kind that we are talking about so these are the three different broadly classified uh, tests that we have and we are going to talk about this so whenever we are talking about hypothesis testing so there is a measure now, interestingly, this measure follows a statistical distribution. Again, remember that a statistical distribution is nothing but a mathematical function which gives us the probability. Now, the measure is calculated from the data that you collect from the experiment. So, there is a calculated value 
and the distribution gives us the theoretical value. So what we are going to do is we are going to compare the tabulated value and the calculated value. Now when I am comparing, I need a particular basis for comparison and this basis for comparison is called the level of significance. So level of significance is denoted as alpha. Okay. So now the standard values of alpha are 10%, 5% or 1%. So 10% means 0 0.1, 5% means 0 0.05 and 1% is 0 0.01. Okay, now this alpha is called the level of significance and there is also something called the level of confidence. So, so there is level of significance and the level of confidence. The level of confidence is calculated as 1 minus alpha. Alright, so we when we have alpha as 10%, the level of confidence will be 90%. When I have alpha as 5%, the level of confidence will be 95%. When I have alpha as 1%, the level of confidence will be 99%. However, let me tell you that it is not necessary that this alpha needs to be fixed because in 1970, there was a publication which says Hypothesis testing can be done without fixed levels of significance. Now there is, of course, we talked about in the last slide that there will be a calculated value and there will be a tabulated value. We can compare them and there can only be three possibilities. Either the calculated value is less than the tabulated value, either the calculated value is equal to the tabulated value or the calculated value is greater than the tabulated. So if I look at the slides, there are three different diagrams here. When the calculated value is not in the shaded area, it is outside the shaded area, it is say calculated value is less than the tabulated value. And I'm going to say accept the null hypothesis. Whenever I say accept the null hypothesis, it means there is no difference. Whenever calculated value equal to the tabulated value, I will say I'm not sure. So calculated value greater than a tabulated value, that means my calculated value is in the shaded area and I'm going to reject the null hypothesis which says, which means I'm going to say there is difference. Now please understand when I'm going to say accept or reject, I am going to consider this accept, acceptance or rejection in terms of this alpha. The shaded area is definitely alpha here and I'm going to say at this particular level of significance alpha I am not accepting it, I am not rejecting it, or I am saying at this level of significance alpha, I am not sure if there is difference. So here ends the first part of the lecture.